स्टडी आई क्यू आई एस अब तैयारी हुई अफोर्डेबल हेलो नमस्कार 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 माय नेम इज पूजा द्विवेदी वेलकम टू माय क्लास द डेली करंट अफेयर्स द डेली करंट अफेयर्स एम्स एट अप स्किलिंग यू फॉर द यूपीएससी एग्जामिनेशन 2024 नॉट ओनली दैट बट आल्सो फॉर द मेंस एग्जामिनेशन बिकॉज देयर आर गोइंग टू बी वेरियस ब्राउनी पॉइंट्स ब्राउनी फैक्ट्स एंड कंसेप्ट्स दैट यू कैन टेक फ्रॉम दीस क्लासेस apply in your main answer writing as well now the thing is that once you start solving questions of problems on a daily basis with the help of these classes just 30 to 40 minutes a day you have to provide first on a daily basis your current affairs will be upgraded secondly you do not need to rely on any monthly magazine after that once you do this you do not need to rely on any monthly magazine i repeat so before i begin i would like to tell you that whatever i teach here i provide in the form of the pdf that i'm using on my telegram channel this is by the name of pooja devedi upsc if you want to connect with me to ask anything about this examination you can be a part of my instagram channel as well that is by the name of pooja devedi moving on these are the myriad events we have to cover specific specifically if we talk about the bhartiya nyay sanhita it has repealed sedition and it has replaced the indian penal code Luna twenty five, another very important aspect of today's class because it is touted to reach the south pole of the moon faster than Chandrayaan. Earlier we were saying that we are going to be the first ever country to land on the south pole of the moon, and interestingly, the landing date of both these missions is the same, twenty third of August. It's a high competition. Let's see who wins. Other than this, lymphatic. Filariasis is another important thing we have to cover, and among the others. So first of all, let's try to solve the practice question that I gave you yesterday. That was the previous practice question to which you all have answered. Most of you all have answered correctly. Consider the following pairs: the excavation sites and the related period. Okay, so we have three pairs. We had to select how many pairs given above is or are correct. First is Tevar. Tevar, Chalcolithic, Kiladi. Neolithic, Burza Hoon, Sangamera. Now, how many pairs given above is or are correct? C. Tevar, Iran. E R A N, Iran. These are some of the very important Chalcolithic period excavation sites. So, the first pair is definitely correct. Kiladi recently is going under the ninth round of excavation, and this is a Sangamera site. and it is also a part of the vaigai civilization next burza hoon is actually neolithic era excavation site so only the first pair is correct second and third is not one only will be the correct answer many of you have answered it correctly i will take the names of those students who have answered it correctly by the end of this segment okay now explanation is that a fragment of a snake figurine which is made up of terracotta has been unearthed other than this a spherical almost spherical crystal quartz crystal has also been unearthed this has been used as a weighing object this is very exciting why before this only stone objects were supposed to be used for weighing but kiladi has shown us that no quartz crystal stone was also used quartz crystal not specifically stone but quartz crystal this has been also unearthed from kiladi Kiladi is actually in Tamil Nadu just to south of Madurai and this as i told you is undergoing the ninth round of excavation and it is showing us the excavation from the Sangam era Sangam era is the ancient era in Tamil Nadu and it generally has been theorized to range from 3rd century before Christ era and 3rd century Christ era but in 2019 a report has dated the unearthed artifacts from kiladi region to a period between 6th century bce to 1st century bce that means pushing the age further back now k amarnath rama krishna he discovered kiladi in 2015 and because of the artifacts that were discovered the sangam era has been pushed to 800 before christ era and it is a part of the very important vaigai civilization and as you can see this is the vaigai civilization the vaigai basin civilization consists of kiladi manalur agaram kondagai 
and the rest as well. And as we see, as we know that the Indus Valley civilization has been known as the urban civilization. Ancient urban civilization, not even ancient, we can go back to thousands of years. And do you know there is a difference of 1000 years between the Vaigai era civilization and the Indus Valley civilization. So we have to keep in mind all these sort of things. Brick structures, luxury items, proof of internal and external trade has been found. Other than this, industries and advanced civilization, weaving industry has been found, dyeing industry has been found, urban life and settlements in Tamil Nadu in the early historic period has also been found. Now, as you see, this is the Chalcolithic site. Here is Iran and just to the west of Jabalpur, we will find Tevar. These are Chalcolithic period sites. Then here is Burza home that belongs to Neolithic period. Okay, moving on. With respect to the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita 2023, consider the following statements. It will replace the Indian Penal Code. It will completely repeal the offence of the sedition under the sedition 124A of the code. I am talking about the IPC only here. It contains section 150 which punishes acts endangering sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. So how many of the statements given above is or are correct? This has just today, a few hours back, has been brought up by the Union Home Minister. Three important bills to replace the IPC, CRPC and the Indian Evidence Act. A huge impact on the criminal system of the country now. Let's see about it. Yes, Bhartiya Nyaya Sanhita will replace the IPC, Indian Penal Code. Since the colonial times, it has dictated the criminal structure of the country. And it will completely repeal the offence that is under Section 124 of the, uh, 124A of the IPC. However, do not be very happy. Why? Because sedition has been said by the Law Commission that it needs to be retained. So, it is retained under Section 150 of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita, which will punish acts of endangering sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. Another very important aspect of this is, under the sedition, if certain acts were seditious, the imprisonment could be for up to three years or life or fine or either both like that. Now, here the imprisonment will be up to seven years or life depending upon the gravity of the situation. So, first is correct, second is also correct and third is also correct. How many are correct? Here it should be all three. All three are correct. Alright. So, the new bill will replace the IPC. It will repeal or we can say completely 124A of the IPC. This section will cease to exist because the IPC is being replaced but it has been retained as a threat to integrity and unity of India under section 150 of this particular bill that has been introduced. Okay, and it will of course completely repeal the offence. I have already told you about this. Other important facet is that Law Commission said that sedition because of the current situation and also the situation that country our country goes through has to remain an integral part of the criminal justice system, criminal law system. So that is why it wouldn't be removed. But it has been repealed. That means the nature remains almost the same and the punishment has been increased. But IPC is no longer our law. This is what this bill says. Okay. And you see that those certain amendments as suggested may be introduced in it by incorporating the ratio descendi of Kedar Nath Singh versus state of Bihar. So, certain judgment was made in this particular case. I will cover it today. Do watch it. Okay, moving on. Now, as I told you, Section 150 talks about, talks about acts which are endangering the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. However, if anybody wants to ensure that they want to criticize the government, government's actions and that is lawfully, it will be an exception. And you see here, the imprisonment is for life or with imprisonment which may extend to 7 years. Earlier in the sedition law, it was 124A uh, in which it was 3 years. Remember that. And shall also be liable to fine. Okay. So, there is an addition of fine over here. That 
important system, IPC system shall no longer be there. Moving on. CRPC of 1973 will be replaced by Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita and the Indian Evidence Act of 1872 by Bharatiya Sakshya Bill. Okay, moving on. With respect to Niti Aayog's aspirational districts program, consider the following statements. It was launched in 2017. There are 118 aspirational districts. Charkhand has the highest number of aspirational districts. So how many of the statements given above is or are correct? This particular ranking is actually to include those districts that have the potential but because they are not able to exploit that potential, they are lagging behind. So these are the aspirational districts. This program was launched in order to ensure that proper convergence occurs between the state and the center, collaboration occurs and also healthy competition occurs between different districts, hence different states. So this program actually measures the performance of different districts at the district level of course on 49 key indicators on which are a part of five broad socio-economic parameters. Okay. So it was launched in 2018 and not 2017. There are actually according to the website, the official website right now 112 aspirational districts. And Jharkhand has the highest number of aspirational districts. We can count them to 19. So first is incorrect, second is incorrect, only third is correct, one only will be the correct answer. So NU, as we see that NU has been undergoing communal violence and now it is, uh, you know, somewhat okay. But Haryana's NU has risen from the 30th position to the second place among the 112 aspirational districts of the country. The ranking of the district has been at first place in the parameters of agriculture and water resources and second when it comes to the nutrition. So the thing is that NU has improved in the Delta ranking. Delta ranking is a monthly ranking which is published by the Niti Ayo. This is from 2018 and as you see that NU was the first performing aspiration district and that was when we actually put 101 districts districts can get updated so make sure whenever you are going to give the examination you take the correct data from the government website niti ayog's website it will show you the correct one january 2018 it was launched to quick and effective effectively quickly and effectively transform the 112 most underdeveloped districts across the country to converge the policies of center and the state collaborate Center, state, nodal officers and district collectors and competition should be healthy among different districts. Delta rank. 49 key performance indicators are there, there under 5 broad socio-economic themes such as health and nutrition. This is one thing. Education is another. Agriculture and water resources third. Here only NU has been the first. First one. Financial inclusion and so skill development and basic infrastructure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So socio-economic parameters. And Jharkhand has these many aspirational districts. Garhwa, Chhatra, Giridi, Gorda, Sahib Ganj, Pakur and the rest. Okay, let's move forward. Now, we have to consider the pairs INS. We have to match them with their associated projects. So INS Kolkata, Project 15A. INS Vikrant, Project 17. INS Sahyadri, Project Seabird. How many pairs given above is or are correct? INS Kolkata and INS Sahyadri are going to participate in the Malabar Naval Exercise. That is why this question has been asked. INS Kolkata has been a part of the Project 15A. That is definitely correct. INS Vikrant, which is an aircraft carrier. We have two aircraft carriers, Vikrant and Vikramaditya. It was developed with Project Seabird. And INS Sahyadri is Project 17. Okay, so first pair is correct, second and third are not. One only will be the correct answer. These are the kind of difficult questions that you may come across. Make sure you remember their class, make sure you remember their project, make sure you remember what are these. Are they missile frigates? Are they destroyers? Are they offshore patrol vessels? Like this. So, two of Navy's indigenous frontline warships, INS Sahyadri. And Kolkata will participate in exercise Malabar 2023. 
which will be hosted by Royal Australian Navy. Australia became a part of the Malabar exercise only in the year 2020. Malabar exercise started as a war game naval exercise between the USA and India in 1992 and it was also conducted with certain breaks in the 1990s. But when India tested its nuclear weapon, it's uh, when nuclear test occurred from the side of India, there was a break on this exercise. But it was again resumed in 2002. After that, it was also not very annual in nature. Since 2014, we are seeing that it is conducted on an annual basis. After that, Japan joined and now Australia joined in the thick of the Galvan clash in 2020, Australia joined. So, we have to understand it from the historical perspective as well. And these four members were a part of the Malabar exercise are also a part of the Quad. Now, ships and aircrafts from the US Navy, Japan, Maritime Self-Defense Force, Royal Australian Navy, all these will participate. RAN is hosting this year's Malabar exercise. It will happen off Sydney, off the coast of Sydney, Australia. I have covered this yesterday as well. It will happen in two phases, harbour and sea phase. In harbour phase, there will be cross-deck visits. Different countries will visit cross-decks. Professional exchanges and sports pictures. Then C phase is the main phase because here we will have high intensity exercise. Three domains of warfare, uh, anti-surface, anti-air, anti-submarine exercise which will also include weapon firing drills. Why? Because Indo-Pacific is being highly dominated by China. China's assertiveness is being countered with the help of this particular exercise. Although it is not very official in nature when they say it, it's just to secure Indo-Pacific. INS Sahyadri is the third ship of the indigenously designed, built Project 17 class, multi-role stealth frigate. Okay, that means it can uh, actually hide from the radars. Captain Rajan Kapoor is currently the commanding or commander of the ship and it was developed by Mazagon Dock Limited Mumbai. Even INS Kolkata has been developed by it. Now, INS Sahyadri is actually third ship of the three strong Shivalik class of guided missile frigates serving the modern Indian Navy. INS Kolkata is the first ship of the indigenously designed and built Project 15A class destroyer. It's a destroyer. It is commanded by Captain Sharad Sinsuwan. Okay. Then INS Pratanta I have already told you. So with respect to the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers act of 2006, consider the following statements. It is implemented under the Ministry of Environment forest and climate change. It encompasses habitat rights for particularly vulnerable tribal groups and also additional seasonal resource access of nomadic and pastoral community. So which of the statements given above is or are correct? The Forest Rights Act is actually implemented under the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. So the first statement is incorrect. And yes, among other things, it respects and acknowledges the livelihood rights both from the individual and community basis of the tribes that are residing there because they are codependent in nature. It also includes the habitat rights for PVTGs. PVTGs have the right to stay there because they are dependent for livelihood there. Their knowledge base, their cultural base, their socio-economic capabilities are highly dependent on these forests. That is why. It also includes additional seasonal resource of nomadic and pastoral communities who want to access that, but they are not resident of there. Okay, so let's see. The correct answer will be option B, two only. Why have I asked you this question? Because the Kamar tribe that lives in the Chhattisgarh's Dhamatari district. Here it is, Dhamatari. It has been the first tribe in Chhattisgarh to have habitat rights under the Forest Rights Act. And it will highly impact their livelihood. It will be for their own good. Okay, Kamar is the first PVTG, particularly vulnerable tribal group because we have just 75 of them in the entire country. A tribe within a tribe. A tribe is a tribe which is really different from the rest of the country based on their primitive traits, shyness of contact, socioeconomic background is also not very good. Among these tribes, if there is a much backward group, that can be declared as a particularly vulnerable tribal group. And Chhattisgarh has Kamar. Kamar tribe families living in 22 settlements in the Magarlod development block of the Dhamtari district. I have shown you that. 
Forest Rights Act recognizes the rights of the forest dwelling, that means forest, those who remain in the forest, tribal communities and other traditional forest dwellers to forest resources. That means they have the access and right to forest resources for livelihood, habitation and other social cultural needs. The act encompasses the rights of self-cultivation and habitation. This is at the individual level. You can cultivate for yourself and have habitation over there. Then community rights are also given such as grazing, fishing, using the land for and forest for community purposes, fishing and access to water bodies to forest, habitat rights for PVTGs, traditional seasonal resource access to nomadic and pastoral ones and access to biodiversity. Community rights to intellectual property and traditional knowledge, recognition of traditional customary rights and right to protect, regenerate or conserve or even manage any community forest resource for sustainable use and among the other things as well. The right to fair and compensation and transparency in land acquisition, rehabilitation and settlement act of 2013. This is used in coterminous, uh, you can say it simultaneously or in congruence with the forest right act. It says under this only, FRA protects the tribal population from eviction of, from that area without rehabilitation and settlement. If you are evicting, first of all, eviction has to be done, not done. And even if it is being done, what are the actual rehabilitation measures? Once they, those are fulfilled, then only eviction can be done. Then rights to, uh, I have already told you about that. So let's move forward to another question. Which of the following is the only central armed police force to have a dual control structure, border security force, Assam rifles, central reserve police force, central industrial security force. I have already covered this in many of my daily current affairs. So please answer it correctly in your heads. The correct answer will be uh, option B, Assam rifles, because it is having the administrative control of the Ministry of Home Affairs. But its operations are under the army, which is under the Ministry of Defense. The administrative part supposedly the salary and the infrastructure is taken care of by the Ministry of Home Affairs. The deployment is taken care of by the army which is under the Ministry of Defense. Also it is the only central armed police force that is having its operation exactly on the lines of the army. So option B will be the correct answer. The Methi and Kuki MLAs have written separate letters to the Prime Minister of India they are having a clash of interest as in they have a, they are having different interest on the situation of Assam rifles in Manipur. Metis are alleging something against them and Pukis are alleging something. Okay, so let's move forward. Assam rifles is one of the six CAPFs. Others also include CRPF, Central Reserve Police Force, Border Security Force, Indo-Tibetan Border Force, Central Industrial Security Force and Sashastra Seema Bal. It has the administrative control by the Ministry of Home Affairs and it takes care of the northeastern states of India, specifically also its borders with Myanmar. And that is meaning that Manipur, here also the Assam rifles are posted. Okay. Now it is tasked with the maintenance of law and order in the northeast along with the Indian Army. It works with the Indian Army, guards the Indo Myanmar border region, only paramilitary force to have a dual control structure which also creates a lot of problem. Salaries and infrastructure happens from the Ministry of Home Affairs, deployment, posting, transfer and deputation by the army, which is under the Ministry of Defense. Operational duties and regimentation are exactly on the lines of the Indian Army, the only force. Now, with respect to lymphatic filariasis, which of the statements is not correct. It involves asymptomatic acute and chronic conditions. It is caused by a type of roundworm. It is carried by only the Kalex mosquito, India has committed to eliminate lymphatic filariasis by the year 2027. In order to actually answer this question, you must be aware what is lymphatic filariasis. It is a neglected tropical disease which is actually caused by a roundworm and it impacts the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is a network of tubes in your body which drains the lymph. A lymph is a fluid which sometimes gets out of the blood streams and in order to ensure that they do not go to different other places, they are emptied back into the bloodstream with the help of these lymph nodes 
in the lymphatic system. So, it is important to maintain the structure of your bloodstream only. So, we have to understand it, then only we can answer it. It is caused by a type of roundworm. The disease causing parasite. And who carries this disease causing parasite? It is the vector mosquitoes. And not only the collects, but also Anopheles and Aedes can do it. So, option C because of that will become incorrect. Now, we have actually reached the conclusion to this, but India is committed to eliminate this particular disease by the year 2027. Sorry. And this is three years ahead of the global target. Then, it involves asymptomatic acute and chronic conditions. Generally, a person will get it in their childhood. Symptoms may not show in the childhood. It may actually show when they become an adult. It can, where it can be very morbid. It can also cause fatality. Asymptomatic acute and chronic condition is correct. Second is also correct. Third is incorrect. And fourth is correct. C will be the correct answer. Union Health Minister has inaugurated the second phase of the annual nationwide mass drug administration initiative for lymphatic filariasis in New Delhi in 81 districts of the endemic states. We will get to that as well. It is also known as elephantiasis and it's a neglected tropical disease. That means it occurs in the tropics and not a lot of research has been done for these many diseases. That is why it is known as neglected tropical disease. And it impacts the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is a very important system in our body to ensure that the lymph, which is a fluid which escapes the bloodstream, is drained back into the bloodstream so that it can reach its proper destination. And it is happening with the help of, as in it is caused by the filarial parasite, which is kind of a roundworm, transmitted to humans through mosquitoes, usually acquired in childhood, and it can cause lymphedema, elephantiasis, and, uh, sorry, elephantiasis and scrotal swelling as well. Later in life, it can also lead to permanent disability. I have not attached a very graphic picture. It looks really graphic. To, to save yourselves, I have used this diagram. Okay, so like this, the swelling happens like this. And because of this, poor people wouldn't be able to walk. So we need more research so that we can ensure that the people are living peacefully without such kind of diseases. And the morbidity management and disability prevention happens to elevate suffering due to this disease. Disease 856 million people are at risk. That's a really high one. It impairs the functions of the lymphatic vessels. Normal vessels look like this. Dilated ones look like this. Expand. It is caused by infection with parasites which are classified as nematodes. Nematodes are roundworms of the family Phileriodidae. The most cause the most or the highest number of disease, this particular disease happens with Boucheraria bancrofti. After that, the second major one is Brugia malayi and then Brugia timori. Okay. And Calyx mosquito also is a vector of it. That means the carrier of this disease. It is widespread across urban and semi-urban areas, Anopheles in rural areas and Aedes in the endemic islands in the Pacific. So, Calyx, Anopheles, Aedes. Okay, moving on. Lymphatic failuresis infection involves asymptomatic acute condition. India is committed to eliminate it by 2027 by, of course, giving people medicines and aid in eliminating the spread of it by killing mosquitoes. The endemic states include As Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Odisha, Telangana and Uttar Pradesh. Now, consider the following statements. We have to see both the statements and choose the correct answer from these codes. The repo rate is the interest rate at which the Reserve Bank of India loans money to the commercial bank. That means the commercial banks, when they have to go for a loan, they will go to the Reserve Bank and it is the repo rate. A decreased repo rate is directly proportional to the amount of money in the market. So, let us see what is the correct answer to it. I'll explain. As I have already told you, this is the RBI and this is the Bank A. Bank A, of course, wants to give money to customers and accept deposits in such a manner that it is able to have profits. Now, 
if it if it wants money to loan it further to the customer it will go to the rbi and it will give qualified securities to the rbi so that it can get loans from that and after that the commercial bank can also repurchase that qualifying securities it gave to the rbi so this is what repo is repurchase option repo re. now first statement is definitely correct from that banker second it is saying a decreased repo rate is directly proportional to the amount of money in the market that means if the repo rate is decreased the liquidity or cash or money that is available in the market will also decrease no let's tell you how that happens a has gone to the rbi rbi is giving loans at a low interest rate a decreased interest rate a will be very happy a will get the most or the maximum amount of loan why because now it can give to the different customers so that it can earn profit on the interest it is going to charge so whenever there will be a decrease in the uh, repo rate commercial banks will get more amount of money with them and more will be spread across different customers that means the lower the repo rate the higher will be the cash in the market or the higher the liquidity in the economy so an a decreased repo rate is inversely proportional to the cash or the liquidity that is available in the economy and not directly directly would be lower the repo rate lower will be the cash availability no that's not going to happen statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is not correct statement 1 is correct statement 1 2 is not correct is going to be the correct answer recently the monetary policy committee which is headed by the rbi governor has taken this decision that the it's of course unanimous that the repo rate will remain unchanged at 6.5% this is the repo rate or repurchase agreement or or repurchase option okay i have already explained you that with respect to pm gati shakti consider the following statements it is a digital platform keyword here is digital to bring 16 ministries together for integrated planning and coordinated implementation of infrastructure connectivity projects it is exclusive of the railways in india and it is based on six pillars highly factual question and conceptual as well how many statements given above is or are not correct pm gati shakti which was launched back in 2021 wanted to ensure that if developmental infrastructural developmental projects are being done it is done in a coordinated manner it's not like some department is coming excavating one site and then uh, trying to smoothen it out another department comes again excavates it it is not cost efficient is it is time taking and it can also harm the different departments so it's a digital platform which will ensure that there is comprehensive collaboration between different ministries so that they know which project is going on where and in that case they can also participate in their project so that they can have their own project uh, combined like this it can happen and it also includes the railways it's not exclusive roads and railways are included and 16 ministries are brought together in a digital platform so first is correct second is incorrect and it is based on six pillars third is also correct one and third are correct not correct only one one only second statement will be the correct answer a total of six infrastructure project with more than 28000 crore rupees have been recommended under the pm gati shakti which is also known as the national master plan for multimodal connectivity planning uh, connectivity plan coordinated planning and execution of infrastructure is the biggest aim integrated planning and this will happen for the next 4 years expediting works on the ground saving cost and creating jobs so this is very important for us to know it will subsume the rupees 110 lakh crore national infrastructure pipeline which was launched in 2019 it aims at increasing cargo handling capacity also reducing the turn about time turn around time at ports as well as boosting trade it uh, also will include 11 industrial corridors and two new defense corridors one in tamil nadu and the other one in uttar pradesh extending 5 4g connectivity and now 5g will also be included later on okay so these are the many objectives comprehensiveness prioritization optimization synchronization analytical and dynamic these are the various pillars on which it is based it's a digital platform which will ensure that each department knows what is going on what kind of infrastructure is going on where so that they can also collaborate 
and integrate their plan together. Integrate means mis mixing together and collaborate means to develop maybe different programs but in a collaborative structure. So it will also give analytical powers as well. ISRO is also a part of it. Okay, moving on. Consider the following statements. Luna 25 is expected that it will reach the south pole of the moon faster that in, than India's moon mission. Earlier we were saying that we are going to reach the south pole of the moon and this will be the first time ever any country is landing on the south pole of the moon. But Luna 25, which was launched just recently, I will tell you when, and it may overtake Chandrayaan. Landing. The landing date of Luna 25 is 23rd of August 2023, which is the same as Chandrayaan 3. Uh, please do watch your televisions on this particular date because it's going to be highly thrilling. I will do that for sure. Which of the statements is are not correct? See, Luna 25 has recently been, you know, launched by Russia. In nearly 50 years, after almost 50 years, Russia has gone on the moon. It's very important to send such messages to the West. That is why it is doing. Luna is expected to reach or land the surface of the moon faster. Because of the fuel that it is using, we are using the gravity and sometimes thrusting. We are not expending a lot of money on fuel. A direct flight from the earth to the moon would be just four days. But Chandrayaan is going in an indirect way. That is why it will. it is taking such a lot of time. And from the earth's vicinity to the moon's vicinity, it is the fuel that matters. So Luna 25 is using a lot of fuel. The landing date of Luna 25 is actually the same as of Chandrayaan. Let's see. So not correct. First is also not correct. Second is also not correct. As in first is correct. Second is correct. But these two will be, of course, neither one nor two. Okay. Sorry for that. First is correct. Second is correct. Okay. So the correct answer will be option D, neither one nor two. Moving on. Luna 25 is a mission to land a lander on the moon south pole and this was launched at 2 11 a.m on august 11 moscow time chandrayaan will land here luna will land here specifically if i have to point out then it will land at the boguslav sky crater okay and this will be the study area the south pole of the moon south pole why is everybody you know uh, after south pole because south pole consists of ice and of course, fossil fuels that have remained untouched. So it will open a lot of, it will reveal a lot of mysteries of the creation of the universe. That is why. And it will reach or land at the South Pole, 23rd of August, 2023. This is the first moon mission of Russia in 47 years, almost nearly 50 years. It was launched by Soyuz 2.1V rocket. Okay. Uh, this is the South Pole of the moon. Everybody is excited about it. Now, a big a big big surprise for you all we are launching our sale for these many optionals you have been asking for options right so apart from hindi sahitya which will only be available in hindi language psir sociology geography history pub ad, anthropology mathematics and philosophy these all are available at a discounted rate at just rupees 12999 this is down from 20499 if you use the code pd live validity is just till 15th of august Amrit Kal for study IQ as well. Now, this is the practice question. I'm sorry. This looks like this, but I have tried to, you know, put it in the correct symmetry. It did not happen. Sorry for that. I will explain it to you. Port Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee Port is India's oldest operating port. Paradeep Port is, it can be deepened to any depth. JNPT, Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust, India's largest container. Let me move myself from here. India's largest container handling port in India. So how many of the pairs given above is or are correct? You have to do that. Okay. So let me take the names of those students who have answered my last question correctly. Uh, so that you all can answer it again for me. Okay. So yes, many students have answered it correctly. Congratulations for that. Option A will be the correct answer of the last practice question. So Mandeep has answered it correctly, I guess. Yes. Ria has answered it correctly. Vaidya has answered it correctly. Uh, Thang Maigs has answered it correctly. Padmashri, Vivek, Abhishek, Simran, 
Shubhank and Vasundra has also mentioned correctly the pairs. Good for you and congratulations for doing that. Another set of students have also answered that practice question correctly. Just stay with me. I will announce your names as well. No need to be disappointed. Mm, yes. Other students who have answered it correctly include Yashwan Sharma, Rishav, and yes. Thank you so much for answering the last question. Answer this question correctly as well. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Study IQ IS. Ab tayari hui affordable.